right. knowledge from right. their history that they could download to their team. That's another thing that many other organizations clearly don't have. Yeah. Meanwhile, tonight on NBC, Collinsworth, uh, Chris Collinsworth, my NFL 100 all-time team compadre, and Al Michaels will be in the booth for this huge one. 49ers win, they clinch home field throughout. That the Seahawks win, my gosh, one would think that Beastquake 2.0 would have something <laughs> to do with it. Picture me in Beast mode. Okay, stop me, dog. I hope you see that. Hold on, Beast mode there. I see that. Don't you guys know you can't tackle Beast mode? Oh. You just threw them out of the way like they were little men. I see eating them Skittles, baby. Throw some Skittles at me because I'm in Beast mode. They power pellets. The Beast is alive and well. Get off me, he said. Beast mode. Oh. It's a great feeling to be back. I gotta tell you, I mean, in the 16 years that I've been fortunate to do this with the NFL uh, network, I don't, I don't, I mean, J.J. Watt having a sack or a big play in Houston is the only person that comes close to an individual play lighting up the entire stadium like Marshawn Lynch making a big play in Seattle that I've ever personally witnessed. It's mm -hmm. like the Matrix. He's plugged into the collective. He makes a big play. Place goes nuts. nuts. Question is tonight, what happens? What do you expect out of Marshawn Lynch tonight, Steve? So I talked to my buddy Doug Hendrickson. That is Marshawn's agent, okay? So I said, uh, What's he been doing? All right. So the last few weeks, Marshawn has been training. He's been running up hills at night with a weighted vest on. Not Jerry Rice's hill, but his own hill over there by Oakland. All right. And he's been doing MMA training, trying to take some beating to the body and trying to get ready for this. OK, so he's in fairly good shape and and, and they're excited to have him. That, that city has welcomed him back like crazy. And I said, well, you know, you, I, that, that's the most important thing. What kind of shape he's in? Because I had this once before. I went to the playoffs in 98, and we were banged up with the defensive line. We brought in Charles Haley just for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is play him a, pay a playoff check. It's, it's, there's no contract, okay? And you know what? He hit Favre, and we got an interception with Lee Woodall. He helped us win that game. He had about 25 snaps. That's all Marshawn's going to get. And you know what? We won this game on T.O.'s catch right at the end. That yep. was the game. Now, I will say this. Charles Haley was spent because that whole week he, <laughs> he was so sore. <laughs> no, he, he couldn't was. practice, right. man, no, and he was. couldn't go the next oh game. He was like, really? Now, he. I'm assuming Marshawn is in a little bit better shape than, than Charles Haley was at that time. But it, that's that's my concern. After this game, if they win it, can he answer the bell Line next week and next still week. get 30 yes, snaps? Exactly. But you're not concerned about him playing at night because he's been running hills at night. So he, he should be, he's he been, should been all practicing good. for this night should game. Should be all good tonight. Yeah. I mean, I, I have no idea. I mean, it, it's one of those things that we've never really gone down this path before. I don't know what to expect from him, but I'm kind of like you, Rich, is that when I think of Marshawn Lynch and I think of him putting on a uniform, especially that's, in that's, Seattle, that's, that's, that's I right. only see one thing. I mean, I see him running over people. I see him firing up the crowd. I see everybody getting pumped up because this is the kind of stuff he does, whether mm. it's Beast Quake or just little runs in the goal line like this where he's bringing that attitude. And, and I believe that's what they need from him. More than 100 yards or, or 25 carries. Chris Carson was a physical running back. Man. He instilled his will on defenses, and that's really what makes this yeah. team what they are. Started with Marshawn Lynch, and Agreed. it carried on through Chris Carson. That's the kind of impact that I want from Marshawn Lynch is bring some attitude and let us know we can be the same kind of team because I'm not sure they're built to win any other way right. than to run downhill and run physically and beat you up from an offensive standpoint. And, and, and that's what he brings, no matter what. You can bring other running backs in. Marshawn Lynch did it a certain way. And Chris Carson, when you watch this dude on tape, I mean, you, you'd say, wow. He, he reminds you of Marshawn Lynch. So losing that Chris Carson and bringing in this Marshawn Lynch, I, I, I think it does great things for the morale of the team because he's a legend to a lot of those young men. He's a legend That's walking true. around there. But don't believe, don't don't you think for a second they didn't lose something in losing that kid. That kid was great. Now, the other kid that they got playing too, Travis Homer from Miami, I, Kurt, I was telling you this yesterday in meetings. That's another dude that runs hard and will play hard all day long. 
But Marshawn Lynch is a whole different beast, man. I can't wait to see what that does. I find it interesting that he's been training for weeks. I don't know for what and for whom, because until Carson got hurt and then Procise got hurt, they didn't really, one would think, need Marshawn Lynch to come back. Could it have been Penny? Penny got hurt. I don't know. It's possible. Talk about just before we just move on. Just the things that you just never see coming. That's what the NFL is so great yeah. about. If I had told you mid-August, Andrew Luck was going to retire before week one and Marshall Lynch was going to unretire for <laughs> Seattle before week 17, yeah. you'd be like, what are you talking about? And yet that is yeah. what, you know, the NFL 100 season has been, been mm -hmm. filled with twists and turns, like, say, the Cowboys entering week 17, one game under 500. Yeah. And we'll talk about that game uh, uh, in a second right here. Um, it's been it's been unbelievable. Rashad Penny woke up early because I'm ready to watch Money Lynch run today. Okay. <laughs> See what I'm us saying? Us too. Us Everybody. too. We Everybody. Is. Well, I mean, it's going to be a late night. It's going to be a late night. They, they so, again, the Cowboys are one game under 500 going into this week 17 game. I mean, they were 3-0. and It's unbelievable what has happened in the Metroplex. They need the Giants to help them out to get into the playoffs. And they got to win themselves. And they're already banged up, too. Dak hasn't thrown a ball virtually all week. Take it away, Gene Slater. Yeah, Rich, and that injured shoulder is still an issue for him. Now, he did say that it is feeling a little bit better. It's still sore, but he didn't throw it practice at all this week. And add to that, it doesn't look like he's going to have his blindside blocker, left tackle Tyron Smith. A team source told me that while he didn't practice at all this week, they were still going to at least try and roll him out here for some of the pregame warm-up drills the same way they did against the Jets. But if you recall, in that Jets game, going through a very similar exercise, he didn't end up playing. So it's not exactly great news. That means swing tackle. Cameron Fleming would be next up. And then we've also got to talk about the cornerback, Byron Jones, in a walking boot after injuring himself in practice. They also don't have the defensive tackle, Antoine Woods. Now to Kim Jones on the Giants-Eagles game. Thanks so much, Jane. And as we know, Wynn and the Eagles are in today, but they'll have to do it without their terrific tight end, Zach Ertz. He is out not only with a broken uh, – a broken rib, but also a lacerated kidney, according to Ian Rappaport. He will be inactive today. Perhaps Miles Sanders can pick up some of the slack. The rookie running back has been terrific, and I love this story. When Miles was eight, his youth coach, Craig Williams, insisted he run downhill, or else he'd wind up on the offensive line. Well, you guessed it. For one game, Sanders wound up on the offensive line. Since then, he told me, He's been a downhill runner. Miles Sanders also told me the only thing he cares about today is the Eagles getting a win. Rich? I mean, uh, it is shocking that Ertz was, I guess, playing with a lacerated kidney last week, too. Uh, took um, that shot early. My early gosh. In that game. Yet the Eagles have a possibility to win it. That's when they're at their best. But We've seen it. How many times have we seen it? Certainly in this division before. How do the Eagles avoid the upset, Kurt? What do you think? Well, I mean, I think you avoid it by doing what you did last week. And we right. talked about Dallas earlier and how they didn't have guys step up and make big plays. The Eagles did. It's a bunch of guys you don't know. Ortega Whiteside. J.J. Ortega Whiteside on first play of the game. Man, not, not a great throw. Young kid reaches up, makes a big play, 20-some yard gain. Now here's another play by Greg Ward here on the sideline. Man, it's covered up really well. Looking work, work back. Tiptoe down the sideline, setting up a, a, another field goal on that point. It was these first two drives that really set the tone for this game. Dallas Goddard, right? No Ertz this week. Dallas Goddard making the big play up over three Dallas Cowboys. And then a couple weeks ago against this Giants team that Boston they're playing today. Scott. Who came in? Boston Scott. Yeah. Who's Boston Scott? I was yeah. calling the game. I had no idea who he was when he came into the game. And he stepped up and played huge. But that's been the difference for this team is a – Bunch of guys you've never heard of stepping up and making big plays. How do you avoid an upset? Those same guys are going to have to step up and play big once again to get that fourth win and catapult them into the playoffs. Did Harlan know who he was? Nope. That's good prep. And Kevin's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Kevin knows everybody. He didn't know who he was either. Way to prepare for that game. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, Ian Rappaport joining us right now. As we all know, tomorrow could be a very uh, difficult day for a lot of coaches in the league. <laughs> Take it away, Ian. Everybody. 
Well, our focus is on the rest of the NFC East. So let's start with the New York Giants. My understanding is Pat Shermer's status is very much in doubt. Has not been decided, but it is in doubt. Now, a win today, which will be three in a row, would help. From what I understand, the owners are split. Steve Tisch in favor of moving on. John Mara, not quite there. Meanwhile, of course, we've been talking all season about the Dallas Cowboys. They are expected to move on from longtime head coach Jason Garrett in the event they are eliminated from the playoffs today. Among those going to be considered Lincoln Riley, Matt Rule, and potentially Ron Rivera. Speaking of Ron Rivera, from what I am told, he is very high on the list for the Washington Redskins. Of course, they've been preparing for a coaching search most of this season. Rivera has told people close to him this could come together with the team extremely quickly, maybe even in the next 24 hours. The Redskins are interested, but other teams who have not yet fired a coach are circling, Rich. The ladies can All right, that's the latest, and we'll be discussing it all day long on NFL Network. Good morning, football. It's four-hour edition leading into the aftermath, which I will join around 3 o'clock from the set of uh, the Rich Eisen show for, for an hour. Uh, NFL Total Access is two hours long after the seven-hour oh, yes. aftermath. In other words, we'll be all over all of that. Not only are Chiefs fans obviously rooting for this guy, but so are Titans fans because if the Chiefs win, the Texans will have the proverbial nothing to play for. Mary, you might see A.J. McCarron starting instead of Deshaun Watson in a must-win game for the Titans. Lots going on here on NFL Game Day Morning, Week 17.